I'm going to share some slides on uh, the goal is to help uh, youth livestock showers to be able to meet target weights and final product acceptability for steer projects. And so some of this uh, presentation will be elementary to many in the audience. Please don't feel that I'm trying to talk down to you. I'm going to present this as if you were a 4 H audience. Now, this presentation, the PowerPoint, and a, a manuscript or a article that goes along with it are on the uh, link that I sent out earlier today. It's also at the top of the chat notes, chat questions. And uh, I would like for you to feel that you can use this presentation uh, in your livestock programming. If you have uh, the need to do that, just give appropriate credit to myself or whoever else I reference. Now, some of the links, I couldn't get them to come up anymore some of the pictures from South Dakota, but uh, we'll just proceed onward. So if we look at the typical growth curve for cattle, as you know, as an animal is younger, uh, a lot of their gain is in lean tissue, and so a lot more protein is needed. There's less fat contained in the gain. And then uh, the as we get into the window of acceptability for um, eating quality, then we're usually in the three to seven percent fat content, and that's from select minus to choice plus. However, this is not what we're trying to achieve for a, a steer project. We're trying to get the animals to at least a choice grade, uh, preferably a mid to high choice. Uh, most of the time, we won't be hitting that prime grade just because of difficulty of achieving that without getting an excessive level of finish. So these are the quality gauge grades that I referenced. And so the prime grade has a lot more intramuscular fat or marbling, which is a primary uh, reason for flavor, flavor and juiciness in a steak. So in Looking at livestock projects, we need about 140 days on feed to achieve the choice grade. And, uh, and so one very important consideration is to have your animals bought at the appropriate weight so that you can achieve the gain necessary. And so we would want to have our animals purchased by about Oh, 200 days out from, from the final show. And we're going to be feeding a 70% grain diet when the animals get into the finishing period. We're gonna proceed that with a 40 day adjustment period on a growing ration to bring them to a full finishing ration. So uh, a uh, beef steer just in its natural environment would have the predominance of the microbes in the rumen would be those that love to digest fiber. There are also microbes there that digest starch, but they're not near, nearly as prevalent. And so in order to make that change, we have to allow sufficient time to adjust the rumen to grow more of those starch loving bacteria. Now, another important consideration to look at is to look at the size of the animal, the hip height, and try to predict what it's going to be uh, projected to be at its final market weight. And so here's some slides, a uh, slide of a uh, table from the Beef Improvement Federation. And uh, the, the weights of the market steers that we typically have in a livestock show, I've circled in red, from about 1,100 pounds to about 1,300 pounds. Now you're gonna have some 1,400 pound animals as well, but uh, if we were targeting that 1,300 pound weight 
at eight months of age, we'd want the animal to be about 47 inches at its hip. We'd probably like to avoid being in the 1500 pound plus uh, So I try to stress with youth audiences the importance of the receiving period. When you get the calf there, you should make sure it has its a uh, uh, black leg or clostridial uh, booster just to help give it a little extra insurance from some uh, problems that can occur as you switch over to a grain diet. Uh, respiratory vaccines, often a good idea and you're going to want to get that animal on feed as quickly as possible and get it up to two percent of its uh, body weight and intake. If the animal is not used to alfalfa hay you need to do that gradually and then as I mentioned uh, prior to this you want to take some time to get it up to uh, the grain ration so you're going to try to get up to a growing ration that's going to be about 50% grain. And I have some guidelines here uh, to, uh, by day 10, you'd have it up to four pounds of grain. And then you're just giving it time to adjust. And so look for signs of the animal being off feed during any of the time that it's in uh, the project. Uh, droopy ears, fever, blood manure, those are things we need to watch out for. So in our step-up rations, we want it to be eating well, slicking up the bunk, and then we don't want to increase grain ration by more than 10% per week uh, until the 50% grain ration is being fed. And then we want to still allow for the same amount of adjustment period to get up to the 70% grain diet. Now in a feedlot animal, they're gonna have those animals on a 90% grain diet. That's just too risky for most of these livestock projects. If we do need to exceed the 70% grain diet, then you probably need to have some commercial ration that you have rumensin added to in order to help prevent some of those problems that we can get like acidosis and uh, really some dangerous situations for the project animal. Most of the time, the 70% grain diet should give you the amount of gain that you should get. Another thing I often encourage uh, youth to do is to put out a, uh, like a molasses block that has rumensin in it, like sweet licks. So I think I've said this, uh, except looking at down here at the bottom of the slide, look at these two uh, graphs, which are feed intake. We want to avoid having a boomerang type uh, feed history, like in this first example, and we want to have more of a plateau. When uh, we're looking at explaining uh, TDN of, uh, of diets, that's a way of uh, counting calories, then uh, if we feed 10 pounds of hay and four pounds come out in manure, we'd say that that uh, is a 60% digestible diet or 60% total digestible nutrients. This slide here is more for homework. It's in the resource, but I'll go through an example. There's some uh, helps to help some uh, uh, youth to decide how to feed the animal, how much they'll eat. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the science of feeding, but also the art. So let's look at some tables. I'm going to omit this slide. Uh, I usually go through some math with them to show them how we can uh, calculate TDN for a mixed ration. But we're going to look at a table that has uh, a weight of an animal. We'll see how much it needs to eat. 
we'll see what percentage of grain that we need to have in the diet to achieve the gain that we want. And then again, we'd have some math here uh, that we'd do. So here's an example. And these tables are in the accompanying uh, publication on the box folder. But let's say that we had a steer that we wanted to be gaining three pounds a day in order to achieve our target weight at the sale. That would require, a, the animal would eat about 20 pounds per day dry matter. And you have to adjust that for moisture. So usually divide that by 0.9 to get about 22 pounds of feed that it would actually eat as fed. If we look at the digestible nutrients, total digestible nutrients, that steer would need to eat about 72% total digestible nutrients to achieve the gain that's projected there. This slide has some feed ingredients that are commonly used in Idaho. If we look at feeding alfalfa, hay, and corn, in order to get a 72% TDN, we're probably going to be in that growing ration 50-50. If we we're going to an orchard grass and barley, which would be similar to a commercial feed, we'd be more like a 60-40. We uh, need to be tracking the animal for its performance. So most youth will not have a scale that they can use, but we can use a measuring tape. And this slide here shows how to do that. We measure from the point of the shoulder to the point of the hip and the length. And then we measure all the way around the heart girth. And we can use this formula and predict what the weight is. And uh, if, you, if you're weighing animals uh, prior to the show, say like you have a midsummer, it's often a good exercise to weigh the animal and have the kids measure them and see how close they can get. If we want to speed up the gain of the animal, we're going to increase the energy content by feeding more grain. We can ha uh, use higher energy grains like corn and we can increase the amount fed. If we want to slow them down, we of course decrease the percentage grain we could substitute a lower energy grain like oats, reduce the amount fed and exercise them. So here's the calories per pound. Uh, corn comes in at 1500 kilocalories per pound. Animal fat is the highest. And then here's intermediate levels for some of the other grains. So now we're gonna move more into the art of feeding animals. So most of the time a market steer project is going to be a yield grade two or three when it's at the uh, show. And of course, uh, the lower the number, the leaner the animal. We're usually not going to have very many market animals that are yield grade one that will have the correct finish for them to grade choice. So our target is around 0.3 to 0.4 inches of back fat in that yield grade two to three. And that will put us in that choice uh, grade. So here's some indicators of finish. As an animal gets more finish, it gets more rounded in its appearance. Here's an animal on the left that's correctly finished. Uh, there's some fat in the flank, but it's not got excessive fat in the brisket like this animal shown here. I just wanted to show you two extremes. Here's a very lean animal. You'll see him uh, in a minute or two. And you can see he has virtually no fat in the flank, none in the brisket. If an animal is properly finished, they're going to be pushing flank as they walk. In other words, they're going to be a little bit of fat push forward as they move the hind leg forward. There'll be a little bit of fat around the tail head and some in the brisket, and there'll be fat over the ribs. The first fat deposited is gonna be right behind the shoulder and then it's gonna spread 
towards the rear of the uh, ribs. The fat around the tail head for properly finished is going to be about the size of a hen egg. Here's two animals that we're going to look at. Uh, here's a animal with much less finish. Here they are looking at them frozen, standing up. This animal had four pounds of fat trimmed off the brisket and this one had 10 pounds. Here's a good market steer. He's thick to the stifle. He's still got some turn to his loin. Here's an overfinished animal that has a, a, a quite a bit of fat deposited in the twists there. And here's a picture of the two different extremes. Now here's this uh, first animal I was showing you. And uh, he, this animal is heavily muscled, but there's, there's virtually no fat on uh, him. It's about 0.15 inch. That's like on a lamb. So this carcass would have problems in the cooler with uh, cold shortening, which would cause the meat to be tougher. Here's an animal that uh, finished, uh, that has uh, quite a bit of intramuscular fat, but he's a yield grade, close to yield grade five with a lot of back fat. And uh, let me just show you a picture or two that we're gonna look at them live and dead. Here's a, a heifer with, she's not very wide. She's got a lot of fat in the brisket and a lot down in the flank. Here's a steer that is pretty well muscled. Doesn't appear to be carrying much fat in the flank and in the brisket. I'd be a little concerned about uh, his grading. Here's the heifer we looked at first. She had 0.9 inches of back fat and she was a yield grade five, so not a good quality carcass. Here's the steer. Really has more back fat than I expected by looking at the picture. He had 0.3. Doesn't appear to have a lot of intramuscular fat from that picture. And, you know, uh, maybe a little more time would help on feed, but this animal may not have the genetics to marble either. Here's a, a nice prospect. I just wanted to throw this picture in because this is from 1951 and not everybody was producing uh, belt buckler steers during that time period. This was over in Townsend, Montana. Pretty nice steer. Here's a steer that's pushing fat, probably has about a right, the right amount of finish. And the thing I'll end up here with, here's a timeline to uh, help you, uh, your youth to maybe decide on some dates and time periods to meet the targets.